your organization. They can have the most potential ever. But if you never spend time with them, and you never take the time to get to know them, and it's all about selling a product, you've got to build relationships in this business. See, it's a people business. But you can't lose sight of what your goals are. And another thing Jim says, he says, and this is in the Bible, it says if you help a lot of people, basically if you help people get what they want, and you help people to achieve their goals, then you can achieve your goals because they've achieved theirs. See, a lot of times we say today, well, I've got this goal, this goal, this goal, this goal, this goal, and I can care less what you want. See, when we get rid of that mentality and we start helping other people, and Jim puts it this way. He says, if you can help a hundred people pay their electric bill, and you can help a hundred people succeed, then you'll automatically succeed, succeed because you've helped a hundred people in your organization. If you can help a hundred people in your downline build their business, you're going to have a thriving business. Not because of who you are, but because of the team that you're a part of. See, network marketing is about building a team. And so right now I'm going to ask Sharon Carter. She's going to come and she's going to teach on team building. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I come from the world of eyes. And so this is what I do. I've done this for 17 years. I go into an office. I say, Sharon, what's your magic wand? My magic wand is the team of people that I'm working with. So I have to put those people together as a team and teach them how to work well together. And I don't know if you knew it or not, but this is a people business. And Stephen made the comment about building a team. Zig Ziglar was my mentor. I went to many of his Born to Win seminars in Dallas. Loved him. And here's what he said. He stood, stood on the platform and heard him say it many, many times. If you will help enough other people get the things in life they want, you'll have everything in life you want. And that's what I built my business on in the world of optometry. And that's how I build my business in this way. I did not get in this business to make money. I told him, I don't want to make money. I don't want to care about the business side of it. I just want to get healthy. I push my body to the limit. I travel all the time. I'm on an airplane, in my car. I said, I really just need to be healthy so I can continue to do what I love to do. So David and Penny, I watched them for two years. I'm that person that's, that watched on Facebook two years. Thank you for posting like you do, Penny, because I'm telling you, when you see that enough and you're thinking, every time I would see her picture, I would think, that needs to be me. I've known her for 20-something years. They used to come to our church and sing, and uh, then they started preaching. So I watched them and watched their story, and I thought, you know what? This needs to be me. Then I saw Melissa, and I decided that was going to be me. But it took Donna getting in and me saying, forget it. This is it. Game over. I'm in. Because everybody was losing weight. Melissa's lost 60 pounds. I go to church with her. Donna lost 40 pounds in, 40, in four months. And I said, that's game over. I'm in here. I, this is time. And I'm going to tell you, I did not get in again to make money. I got in to be healthy. I posted my first picture and it went crazy. Everybody wanted to know, what was I doing? And you know what? I want to help other people. So guess what? This business works just like my optometry business does. When you help other people get the things in life you want, guess what? I wanted to go on that vacation. I lost my husband um, 21 months ago. And it's been a little hard. We were very much goal setters. We were people that all, we never started a year out with a, without a goal list. I mean, we were marking things. We went through two goal lists in our in our married life, just marking things out. I mean, things we never thought we would have. And I, I said, this was the first year I started my year without anything on my goal list. So Penny and David asked me to go to, to Dallas, and I said, okay, I'm gonna go with them. I got to see see a little bit of what was going on there, and I thought I was very impressed with the corporation. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see what the, what was behind all this. Very impressed with that, and they threw out this vacation, and I said, you know what? I'm putting that on my goal list. That's my first goal on my list. And I said, I'm going to mark it off. And so Nigel said, well, we'll see. We'll see how you do. Well, in 45 days, I made my goal, and I'm going on this trip. This is your team. Yeah, that's my goal. This is your team. Yeah, we have. How many people do we? I don't even know how many a hundred. A hundred people in my team, and I've been in the business four months. Now, it was the person that I didn't, I had no idea that Beth would take this and run with it, 
The people I thought would take it and run with it, they didn't. But you know what? Someday they might, but if they don't, you know what? Then they can watch me make it, watch me keep, continue to lose weight, continue to stay healthy, and continue to build a business and help other people. But let's talk about building that team and what are the fundamentals of building that team. Zig always said that together everyone achieves more. That's what team stands for. You might can achieve a little bit by yourself. I couldn't have put 100 people in my business in four months, really three months, because we started about a month after I got started. I couldn't have done that on my own. But when you put everybody in together, working together, then guess what? The sky's the limit. And the biggest thing you've got to remember is it's not all about you. That's what I had to learn when I went to this office. You know, people say, oh, Sherry, you go in and you do all these wonderful things in these offices. No, I don't. And I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't have the success I have if I said, yeah, I do. That's me. You know what I say? It's not me. I'm here one to two days a month. These people right here are the people that are here every day, 30 days a month. All I do is coach them into making this happen. But I had to become a leader to be able to do that. And that means doing things that nobody else wants to do. If I go to that office and you know what, everybody's busy, and I see that toilet needs cleaning, you know what? I got the toilet brush out. They walked in one day and they said, what are you doing? They could hear, the, hear me in there cleaning. And I said, I'm cleaning. And they said, we can do that. I said, no, you don't have time to do it. And you know what? I can do it. And I did have time. So there you go. We got it done. So that's a big thing about being in a team. Don't ask people to do things you're not willing to do yourself. And you want people to follow you. How can they follow you if you're not moving? you got to step up. I'm telling you, Beth's a hard one to stay in front of. I'm, a, I'm telling you, she is a leader. She is a manager in a big three practice uh, offices in, in Iowa. She's very successful in her world. And now she's becoming very successful in this world, helping people become healthy. Let me tell you, it's showtime. This is one of the biggest things about being a team leader. you got to show up looking like you're the leader. You, here's what they taught me in energy class. you got to show up dressed one notch above the best dressed person there. You better be ready to roll. Some people don't think you have a business because you don't look like you got a business. You gotta show up ready. I had two of my managers come in one day and they were they managed three locations. And I'm telling you, they looked horrible. Skin tight t-shirt, overweight, skin tight t-shirt, hair up on their head, no makeup on, come rolling in in their tennis shoes, one of them had flip-flops on in my office. Flip-flops. So I said, she, and they were whining because the people in that office wouldn't follow them. Here they were in all their they were all in uniforms, they looked to the nines, hair done, and they wouldn't know why they wouldn't follow them. I said, girls, come in here, let me let me tell you something. I said, while we're talking. I said, you know why they don't follow you? I said, because you look like you left the homeless shelter this morning. Mm. I said, hey, look, the doctor said. I said, you got, you got to up your game here. We're leaders, and if you want people to follow you, people ask me all the time, what do you do? What do you do? Because this is what I look like when I roll in. And I don't have a problem selling stuff to people in Optimal. I don't have a problem talking to people about the products. Because I'm going to show up dressed for success. It's showtime. Your business is open. Now is your day. Make it happen. Now, here's where I find my team falls down. Especially when we get five, six locations, this is where we struggle. It's communication. Who is in control? Here's what my manager will say. Well, she wouldn't come tell me about that. You know what? She shouldn't have to come tell you about that. You're the leader. You need to know about that. You need to have your eyes on things, and you need to be setting the pace, and the communication comes from you. I'm going to tell you, David has called me almost every day, at least once a day, since I got in this business. I needed that. I didn't just get some products. I didn't just get healthy when I got in this business. I got a business family, and I got a team of people that support me. When I need something, I text him and say, David, I've been sick all night long. I've been throwing up. I'm there by myself. I don't have anybody there with me. I'm going to be flying back by myself. He, he texts me right back. I'm telling you before I even got the text all you, it wasn't just delivered. I was getting a message back. That's a family. Anytime, day or night, right? We keep the same hours, nighttime, late. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. Think of in your mind a leader that you respect. And think of what qualities that leader has. Because you're going to determine where your team goes. And if you don't go anywhere and you don't move, neither is your team. If you look around, I tell you, when you look around and it's not happening, look in the mirror. In our leadership team, I tell them, y'all, if we keep hiring people that aren't working out, it ain't them. Hello. If we hire two that don't work out, look in the mirror. It's us. It's not them. It's the leadership. What qualities do those people have? Zig Ziglar was one of my people. He was a server. 
And I'm telling you, and he knew people. He saw me. You know how many thousands of people that man saw every year? He would see me. I wouldn't go every single year because it's not expensive. But I'd go about every other year. And he would say, Carl and Sharon, how are my friends from Arkansas? I mean, he was old too. I thought, my lens. How does he remember me? It was amazing the leadership skills that man had. And seeing people go across. I went to his last born to win. And seeing people go across and say, this man changed my life. One woman said, I was going to commit suicide. And that somebody took me to this born to win. And I'm telling you, she said, God turned my life around. It's amazing. Do you know that we can turn people's life around with the products we have? Yes. This pro- these products have turned my life around. I wanted to be healthy.